Hi friends, it's Paisley and Glue here, and today we're gonna to talk about swing tacks. And swing tacks are something that I use when I'm making costumes and garments to keep layers of fabric sort of behaving together or swinging together without having to stitch them together to completely. So I'll often use them on say a cape, uh, for the lining of the cape to the outside of the cape. I'll swing tack them together in a couple places so that the lining doesn't flip up and show all of your seams and it just kind of keeps the whole thing married together in an attractive way. We'll often use them in a large collar. If you have a collar that wants to sort of flip up and be unruly, you can swing tack it down so that it's not fully attached to the shoulder it's swing tack, so it's sort of floating above the shoulder, but the tack is gonna keep it from flipping up on you. So I use them on my Maleficent skirt to keep the um, petticoat and the skirt together, and I actually put a snap on it so that they were ultimately removable so that the petticoat and the skirt could move independently together, but also stay as one. I'm gonna show you two different ways to do swing tacks today. One is called a bar chain and one is called a thread chain. And they're both good for different things. We'll talk about that as we go along. So let's get started. Okay, so we've got two sets of what I'm gonna call our fashion fabric and our lining fabric. We're imagining this is the hem of something. So you've got your lining and then your fashion and ultimately you want the lining to be a little bit shorter than the fashion and we kind of want to marry these together without hard stitching them down so we're going to use swing tacks so we're going to do a uh, thread chains on one and we're going to do thread bars on the other so we'll put this aside right now we'll do the thread chains first I'm going to use some um, kind of thick thread here just so you can see what I'm doing obviously you want to use something probably smaller and something definitely that matches your project better. So first step, put a knot in it. Put a knot in it. We start by putting the needle into the fabric. At any point you can kind of bury your knot under the edge of your hem. And then you're gonna go back in and come right back up where you started. And you're going to pull this so that you have a loop you're not going to pull it taut and then you're going to slip your two fingers in and then pull your extra thread and then pull that tight so this might remind you of doing like finger weaving when you were a kid A little hard because I don't have this cemented onto anything the fabric that is but you're just going to go ahead continue to weave that chain until you get to the length that you want your chain to be and like I said it could be anywhere between a half or even a quarter inch long up to an inch or two so let's do, this is approaching an inch, so let's stop there. Still got my needle over here. I'm gonna run that through my loop, pull that taut to finish off my chain. And now I'm just gonna attach it onto the back side of my lining. And I'm just gonna stitch that through the back layer so that you won't see it from the front and stitch it through a couple times and then knot it off. So this way is faster for sure, but it is not as strong. So this is actually pretty strong because I use like heavy duty outdoor thread. But if you were doing this with regular thread and if you were only doing it with a single thread, you can see where, get into frame, you can see right where it attaches to the one side, you only get that single 
thickness of thread or double thickness of thread for me, but you can get the idea that that is the weak point and that's always where they break. So these annoy me because if you have something that's gonna take any sort of uh, pressure or torque, it's gonna snap right at that point after a couple times wearing it. So it's great for really delicate fabrics. It's great if you're in a rush because it goes relatively quickly. It's great for things that are not going to take any force. But if you are doing this on something like a hem that's really heavy, you're definitely gonna want to use the thread bar method. But you can see how if I did one here and then I did one, you can do as many of these as you want. If I did one a couple inches down, it really kind of keeps this married together without being nailed down, which is nice. So it can kind of float and it's not gonna make a weird pucker from either side, but it'll keep the two layers behaving nicely together. Okay, that is our thread chain. Thread bar is similar, takes a little bit longer, but it's much stronger. So again, we are going to make a knot in one end. We're gonna start the same way by taking a bite out of the back of our fabric without going through the front. But we are going to go ahead and jump straight over to the other side of our lining and or fashion fabric. Keep jumping off the wrong way, okay. And so you do need to decide how long you want these before you start. And actually, as you go, as you make your chain, it's gonna get slightly smaller just because of um, physics and mass and all of that business. So always make it a little bit longer than you think it's going to. This also takes a lot of thread, so keep that in mind. Make sure you cut your thread lengths long enough, but you're gonna go back and forth here a couple times. You're making a pretty strong base here. So you could just go through twice. I'm gonna go ahead and do three times. So because I had double thread, I've got uh, six layers now of thread there. So that's a pretty good base. You're just basically gonna tie a bunch of half hitches here. So that's just, making a loop and then bringing your needle back through the loop and then pulling straight. So it's just like making a friendship bracelet from when you were kids. So you're making a loop, pulling your needle under your bar and then through that loop that you just made and then pulling it tight. Making your loop under the bar, through the loop, pull it tight. And then you just work your way down from there. Hearts, my piece of fabric are so small. That was a bad choice on my part, sorry. But you can see my bar growing there. And then you can also see how small my thread tail is getting. Hopefully we'll make it to the end. Okay, so there's my nice strong uh, thread bar there and I've reached the end now I need to knot it off so taking a bite out of my fabric again not going through the back side and I'm running out of thread here mostly because I have using the largest needle in the history of the world but knotting off there and I'll do it one more time you can put a little bit of um, fray check or something on the end there to make sure your knot doesn't come out. Trim off and we're done. So again, you can also see how much stiffer this is. So again, if you're using a lighter weight fabric, you might want to go ahead and use the thread chain, but the thread bar is much stronger instead of just having one thread at the end holding the chain together to the fabric, we've got all of that sort of center 
thread bar going through the middle. So this is not gonna go anywhere. If you wanna remove it, it's gonna be a pain in the butt. So generally, <laughs> it's a better choice for something that's gonna take a lot of force. It's gonna keep your layers together. It's gonna keep them happy and behaving. All right, so thread chain, thread bar, great uses for both depending on what your project calls for. Thanks for following along with me today. I hope that you can use um, some swing tacks in your own sewing to help keep your costumes or garments living together and behaving and making you look your best. See you next time.